Hey, Rusty, over here. <laughs> Welcome back everybody. So in today's video, oh, I wanted to share five reasons why I don't think you should have a dingo as a pet. <laughs> Okay, so one reason why I feel like you shouldn't have a dingo as a pet, and this is the reason I feel is the most important, and I'm going to explain this one first because it's going to take the longest to explain. I feel like you shouldn't have a dingo as a pet or a companion animal if you don't know where it's come from. And essentially what I mean by this is, in Western Australia and New South Wales, dingoes are not protected by permits. So that means that hunters can go out into the bush, they can shoot parent animals, they can take the dingo cubs from the wild and they can sell them to whoever they want. Because if people don't need a permit to own a dingo, then anyone can have one. And I think this is problematic because people don't always know what they're getting themselves in for. There's a lot of things that you have to be willing to accept to have one around your home. So. Introducing permits, I believe, is really important in Western Australia and New South Wales to help protect dingo cubs so that they're not taken from the wild. Both of these guys were actually taken from the wild. The reason why I have them in my care is because I got them from an animal shelter, an animal rescue, and they both actually needed to be rehomed. So due to no fault of their own they have ended up in human care now if permits are introduced then no one will be able to sell them or they shouldn't be able to sell them or get hefty fines if they do sell them if they've been taken from the wild and i believe that you should only have a dingo companion if you're willing to make the concessions for the other reasons i'm about to explain to you so that is the first reason Okay, so I'm going to switch to a different video right now. This is a video I filmed in my backyard, and this is reason two why I feel like you shouldn't have a dingo as a pet. Okay, so this brings me to the next reason why I think you shouldn't get a dingo as a pet, unless you are willing to have them dig a den in your backyard. Now, dingoes are den animals. They build shelters underground to protect themselves from the rain and the sun and probably the cold so i'm going to climb down in here and show you exactly what these guys have done as you can see i put some logs just near the entrance here but there is a den in my backyard and they've got their kongs down here now this den is actually a lot bigger than it looks you can see straight through to the other side but over to the left where the kong is there's actually a really long tunnel about as long as my body so i'm five foot ten and it at least goes back about six feet so <laughs> the, <laughs> the boys are behind me wondering what i'm doing <laughs> but yeah i just want to show you all this if you are considering having a dingo you need to understand that this is the kind of thing they're gonna do in your backyard it's something they're gonna want to do now i'll show you something else <laughs> Oops, sorry about the camera work, I was just changing hands because I've got a torch here. I want to show you all this as we come down in under here. <laughs> you can see this den actually goes back a very, very long way around the corner. And this is what I was trying to tell you all. So you need to understand that they will want to make a den in the backyard. And I'm happy for them to do that in this location in the center of the garden because they're not going underneath any of the fencing and they're not going to end up in my neighbor's garden but this is their home that's where they hang out when we go out for the day so that's probably reason number two it's a pretty you know a pretty big it's a pretty big thing having this in your backyard but I think it's cool so it suits me but it's not going to suit everybody, and I just want you all to know that. 
Okay, so as you saw, I had a huge den in my backyard. Now, if you're not prepared for them to do that kind of thing in your yard, then you probably shouldn't have a dingo as a pet. Okay, the next thing I wanted to talk about was uh, destructive behavior. So not only is it likely that they're gonna wanna dig a Wow, planes above my head, that's pretty cool. <laughs> okay, so not only are they gonna wanna dig a den in your backyard because they are den animals and they do wanna make a shelter so they can protect themselves from the sun and the rain, but they will also want to chew on things. A lot of people that have dingoes as companion animals have had their couches chewed apart and their other furniture. Now, I've been quite fortunate up to this point in time. I'll show you a few little video clips. Uh, they chewed the bottom corner of the couch a little bit. So there's about a ping pong ball size uh, tear in the bottom corner of the couch. They also chewed the corner of the coffee table, which we actually weren't using anyway. And it's now only used as a stepping stool for them to get up onto their bunk bed. This way, let's go and uh, they chewed the uh, bottom corner of our hall stand so that is it i'm not hiding anything from you that's exactly what they've chewed on oh and i believe they got hold of a book from the bookshelf so there's been four uh, things that they've managed to get a hold of and chew to bits now we are actually home quite a lot and the dingoes are very rarely left by themselves so when we are home, we're able to monitor this. If we were to go out for the day and leave them inside the house, I would guarantee that the damage would be far worse than what it actually has been. Okay, so as I'm out exploring with the boys, the next reason I wanna bring up is you really should have two. If you are thinking about having one dingo, it's probably not gonna work out for you. Some dingoes get along fine by themselves with just their family. I actually have been in contact with some people on Instagram who have a female dingo and they actually tried to house Rusty at their property but she did not like him and she kept attacking him and they ended up having to return him to the animal shelter that was looking after him so they could find him a new home and eventually he ended up with me. But yeah. Um, for the most part, they actually do get along so much better if they have a companion. Now, it doesn't have to be a second dingo. If you have a hardy dog, a medium sized to large dog that gets along well with other canine, then you're gonna be fine introducing a dingo to your family if you can have two. Okay, so the kangaroos have moved off. Now, that was a little bit of a hectic situation, so I don't know if I really explained that very well. The final reason why I think you probably shouldn't have a dingo as a pet, unless you're willing to make an exception for this, is the fact that they are not domesticated animals. Now, I didn't really explain that very well a moment ago. I'm actually going to flip to some footage now and show you what just happened. Okay, now the final reason why I believe you probably shouldn't have a dingo as a pet unless you're willing to make an exception in this particular case is that they're very difficult to train. It's been described like trying to train a house cat. So they can learn some commands like I can get them to change direction if I want to, if I want to walk a different way, things like that. And uh, they do sit and wait for their food, which is fantastic. I think that's the um, best thing. Uh, and I think that was actually the most important skill for them to learn because they even listen to my kids when it comes to food. So <laughs> right now, I think they know there could be kangaroos in the area because this is usually what they do when they have detected something like a kangaroo in the area. So I'm very curious. Actually, There you go. See, told you. <laughs> So they knew those kangaroos were there before we even saw them. They could smell them or hear them, I guess. So really, really interesting, really fascinating animal. But they have a huge prey drive, a high prey drive, I should say. A lot of dogs do. Um, but if you're not prepared to deal with a dog that has a high prey drive, then, see, they want to go off after them. As I was just trying to explain, it's kind of like trying to train a house cat. 
they can learn some basic commands. And there are some exceptions, obviously. There are some dingoes out there. I'm thinking of you, Kimba Dingo. I've seen videos of you <laughs> running around and having a great time out in the forest. And Kimba always returns to... Uh, sorry, I'm not sure if Kimba's a girl or a boy. But Kimba always returns to its uh, carer. So, yeah, <laughs> they still want to go off after those kangaroos. They took off that direction. But that's just a classic example. If you're not prepared to deal with this, and obviously I'm kind of letting this go on a bit longer than I normally would because I'm trying to talk to you guys while uh, walk them on a lead. But I would normally sit down and wait for kangaroos to move out the area and calm them down, which is what I'm about to do uh, to allow them to continue on their walk. So I'm gonna do that now. I'll be back in a moment once they've settled down. Wowzers. All right, you two, let's get this under control. Okay, so we're back. Now, as I was trying to explain to you, they are not, they haven't really, they haven't really gone through the domestication process. There are some dingoes in captivity and there are some dingoes around the country living uh, in domesticated, like household kind of situations, but they are still wild animals. They like to wrestle. <laughs> They're all getting tangled up in the rope. So yeah, as you just saw, they were chasing after those kangaroos. They have a high prey drive. Haven't really been through the domestication process. But they are beautiful animals. They really are. Now, you're probably surprised that up to this point, I haven't mentioned anything about aggression. I don't really think I'm qualified enough to really go into this. And it is one of those uh, topics which has to be answered seriously because you know, there's children out there and I don't want anyone getting hurt. So I'll give you my thoughts on dingo aggression based on what I know, because I only have these two dingoes in my life and these guys might be an exception to the rule. So, you know, you need to take that um, into consideration as I explain this to you. I don't find them to be aggressive at all. Like they're playing with each other right now, but I've got no problems getting involved. I am completely confident that they're not gonna try and hurt me if I try and get involved. Like they do mouth a little bit. Sorry if the camera works a bit. I'm just trying to demonstrate. Like I don't mind getting my hands in there. Um, you know, see, like they know, they know the difference between me and they know the difference between them. So they're having fun right now playing with each other. And uh, I just, yeah, I, I'm, not, I'm not worried or concerned at all about them. Um, they do mouth, like they have mouthed my hands before. They're getting a bit rough with each other. Oi, you two, enough. Enough, good boys. Come here, Rusty, you troublemaker. Yeah, see, like, he's pretty hyped up, but I'm still pretty comfortable <laughs> getting involved. So, <laughs> you just tripped over the lead, you silly billy. So, some of you might be thinking about um, why haven't I got them in harnesses, um, which deter, <laughs> which deter this kind of pulling behaviour. Well, it's because dingoes are actually shaped differently to dogs. So, let me try and demonstrate. Let me show you. Come here, Rusty. So, um, dingoes' shoulders are actually very narrow. I don't know if you can see that. Um, dogs' shoulders are like, like they they stick out a lot more. So dingoes, <laughs> dingoes are built differently to dogs and they can slip out of harnesses. See, he's mouthing me there, but there was no pressure at all. So he's just, <laughs> he's, ta he's tied up in the lead. Hang on, you hogtied yourself. <laughs> and they've hogtied me too. Let me get my legs loose. So yeah, they, um, they are built differently to dogs. Now, I do have a couple of harnesses on the way. Now, they can slip out of harnesses because they can, they're can they very flexible in the shoulders and in the hind legs. So they can just slide their front legs forward and slip straight out of a harness. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to keep the chokers on them still because that's the only thing that actually stops them from escaping is the choker because their head is actually wider than their shoulders. So they can't really slip out of a choker collar, but because they pull so much, it's really uncomfortable for them and I don't like that. So I want to try and give them the best quality of life I can give them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get these harnesses in. 
and uh, <laughs> I hope you're all enjoying this and uh, I'm gonna actually attach the, the harness I've ordered has a clip on the back so I'll actually clip the choker to the clip on the back and then I'll attach the lead to the front in the chest area so that when they do pull it actually swings them off to one side now I've rambled on a bit I apologize <laughs> trying to get this information out all these to muck around like this um, <laughs> yeah so anyway thank you so much for joining me I really appreciate the support I hope you found this video what are they they probably seen or smelt something yeah I hope you found this video informative <laughs> and uh, I'll see you all next time.